and shamelessly old. Um, and as you can see, I'm trying to hide it. Very, 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 very hard, trying to hide it. I'm not sure if it's working. Uh, indulge me. Um, growing old absolutely stinks. Stinks awfully. It's, it's really the, the smell of your decaying hope. Um, and, it, and it's the stench, the sheer stench of your rotting dreams. Wow. And additionally, in my case, it's the stink of mothballs. And, and that's because I have a lot of cashmere. Um, it's not my fault. But you know, I'm one of these people who, who try really hard to make sure that I don't just sit home trying to grow gracefully. I want to do something about it. So sometimes I make the mistake of going shopping. <laughs> and going shopping is awful. When you go shopping, there are mirrors in the changing room. So every lump, bump, and misplaced biscuit <laughs> is reflected right back at you. And when you go to the changing room, you discover things about yourself you never knew. You discover, I discovered I had a lump underneath each arm. I've never seen this at home. I only saw this in the changing room. For days later, I had to walk like this just to make sure that everything kept dry. And the menopause doesn't help when you're trying to stay dry. I'll tell you that. But anyway, I left Topshop, <laughs> unable to find anything that fits. And then I did, went home, spoke to my husband, and I said to my husband, what are we going to do about this growing old lark? And he said, well, we need to do something. So we decided to go clubbing. <laughs> we decided to go clubbing. So we got dressed. I put on my age-appropriate t-shirt. I do own some. I also put on my Converse shoes, sported some neck tattoos, and we got to the club. Shock, people were queuing. I didn't know people queue to pay money. How can you queue to pay money? Anyway, we did what we normally do. We went to the front of the queue. Wow. And we spoke to the concierge. And spoke to the concierge. I think that's what they're called. <laughs> but um, where is the VIP area in this club? He looked me up and down, and he resembled my cousin Joshua, who's quick to anger. He asked me for my ID. I was really pleased that he asked me for my ID. I felt that the medicine was working. <laughs> the hormone replacement tablets were doing their job. <laughs> he took one look at my ID. And then he said the words that you'd never want to hear. He said, you are not on the list. Ah. <laughs> this club is not for you. Oh my. <laughs> we don't allow old women <laughs> in the club. <laughs> you need to go home. Oh. Look after your grandchildren. <laughs> so this was my cue for some serious black on black violence. <laughs> It was just me. He was calm. <laughs> anyway, we left the club. That's how I tell it. We left the club. <laughs> I got home. I thought, how can I cheer myself up? You know what? I'll call up one of my basic friends. <laughs> Chose one of them at random. Didn't matter which. Called them up. And we started talking about Lidl and Aldi and all the deals at Tesco. I had a great time. Anyway, put the phone down and thought that now what I'll do is actually fill in my tax return. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.